This is Mark Soper of Blood Rage, and you are now tuned in to PVD Horror. <laughs> that was actually a perfectly amazing right there. So <laughs> thank you for, for that. <laughs> that was very appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> So, so Mark, this is actually, um, this is such a pleasure for us. We are huge fans of Blood Rage. The idea of actually speaking to you right now is uh, when we started, so we were coming up on our three year anniversary of doing this. So we have a large social media presence. We have this podcast, but we also do live events um, and try to, we have like a community that we've tried to build here. And we actually played Blood Rage on, um, for one of our live events, like a week or two before Thanksgiving, two years ago, I think it was. Yeah. Um, so to, to be talking to you right now is actually really amazing. Uh, we're huge fans of the film. So thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. It's really my pleasure, thank you. Um, I think what you were um, discussing with us before we just start, uh, started to record was actually really uh, kind of a great lead into like a conversation here. Cause you were mentioning how this film has had like a, this new life and you know people are reaching out to you. Could you just kind of describe that again? It built really slowly. You have to understand, I mean, 1987. So what, three, four years ago, I, the first contact I got was from Italy. And, um, you know, I kind of went, yo, what? This is like 30, 25, 30 years, whatever. And they said, no, no, it's like we have a base, a fan base for this film. And it really just, I get these little shots and people out of the blue would find ways to contact me. And then I got contacted by some people who were doing the Blu-ray re-edit and putting it out again. And they asked me to come in and do um, a, for the package, you know, to come in and do an interview for the package. And I went, no, movie. And then, I mean, I mean, maybe this is too honest. I don't know, but it's not that I blew them off, but I get these, these inquiries out of the blue. And finally, it, it just built enough that I went to you guys. Frankly, I just went, hello, Mark, wake up. There's something going on on out there yeah. people are stopping me in the street <laughs> right but you see that's the way i feel yeah like, are you kidding me no, that's I, awesome. I, no, no i love I, I you know i love these films and i, I you know I, I love this film it's such a kick it's yeah. such a hoot. so that's also one of the reasons i responded because two people did stop me on the street just in the last month. Uh, yeah. Thanks. That, and you, you also said you did some research uh, for the film. Do you want to, do you care to elaborate on the research that you did for the role? I literally went out to, um, you, you guys are going to have to help me. I, I literally went out <laughs> to, um, you know, the big, the big floppy things that you used to buy back then to watch movies. Oh, the, and, uh, the blockbuster. The yeah, video right, exactly. Yeah. Blockbuster. Yeah. I literally went down to the horror section of Blockbuster because it was a genre I just had never done. I wasn't sensitive to it. I just, I didn't, you know, okay. Love Stanley Kubrick, who doesn't? I didn't like The Shining very much. Obviously it was great, something was going on, but I went, <laughs> the reason I say that is that I got this film, I went out, I grabbed like literally eight films and just watched them back to back to back, immersed in it went and did this movie, came home, watched The Shining and went, whoa, did I miss that movie the first hmm. time around? I completely just missed it. It just was a world I didn't know, but I never would have been able to catch up to it if I hadn't done some, you know, yeah. just the whole style and the whole, what's, what moves it, what's credible, what works in that world that doesn't necessarily work somewhere else. Sure. That's awesome, you know? So since we talked about some of the films that you look for research, what, what was something that got you into acting? What started your career? Uh, the, start, the start of my career got me into it. What got me into it was, excuse me, what got me into it was um, literally I was having trouble in high school and my sister said, 
uh, you need to get something to absorb you. And there's this Marine who teaches theater and that's a good combination for you, authority and something to completely absorb you. So I went down to high school and got a part in a play and I got so nervous opening night that I had a fever and everybody was worried because, you know, Kenny, he's going to be sick and he do the play. Fell off the stage, sliding across the floor in the opening and people laughed. And I got so high doing it that I was addicted pretty much from, the, yeah. from that point on. It was pretty classic yeah. kind of a story. So yeah. I, I, I really just worked theater, whatever I could do from then on. Um, so, you know, taking a look at your, at your credits, um, horror doesn't have a large presence in, in your film credits. So either I noticed there's like a, you know, a few standout things, Blood Rage being one of them. Graveyard but, Ship too. Yes, yep, yep. Um, so when you were approached about Blood, Blood Rage, how did you feel about that film when you first kind of figured out what it was about and like what made you decide to, to go forward with that project? I knew the casting director pretty well. And, um, I, and Louise Lasser um, was set, as I remember. And the twins, I, I mean, that just playing twins and even more so on a low budget where you had a pop, pop, pop from one to the other. Yeah. And that whole thing of the bad, you know, the bad kid is, you know, he's a bad kid because he's been, you know, had bad things done to him and stuff, but he's actually okay. He's just a bad kid. And then a the really good kid is a psychopath. I mean, I loved it. <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I mean, what's not the love? Absolutely. I, I, I really I just, you know, but I didn't know how to judge the material. I'll be honest with you. I had no way to, you know, I don't want to beat it to death, but I, I really didn't know how to judge the material off the page. So you, like to say, oh, this looks like this is going to be a really good film or to say, oh, this is kind of like this isn't going to sell. You couldn't judge it that way. You mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like or this is a really good this is a really good horror film yeah yeah <laughs> this is like you're just talking about like the twins like we see it today in the film industry over the years we have one actor playing a set of twins how was that experience playing todd and terry you know like how did you prepare for that role well you know um the way i did it and i and i do like I've done a fair amount of theater before I came into it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it sounds maybe a little crazy. I'm sure there's, you know, whatever engages your imagination, man, as long as you make choices and you have a clear connection, it's different. But I literally had done um, breaking down characters and breaking down roles. I'd done summer stock. I'd done not week to week, but every other week, two summers, five plays. So, and periods, different periods. So I broke it down. I broke down, you know, different postures, different, you know, cho choices, different demeanors, different. I literally broke it down so I could have a little cheat sheet of 10 things just to help me because, you know, long days, keep it consistent, that kind of thing. Yeah. So I, I really just broke it down like that. Um, and I did, I did all that, even though it was a horror film, even though blah, 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 I did all that kind of thing to make the characters different and to keep it consistently different throughout and with enough so that they each had a life and an arc for themselves. Yeah. Yeah, you did a great and job with that, man. <laughs> even given them, you know, what the material is, I, I did all that, I did. Yeah. yeah. Did, it, did it get confusing sometimes? Because at one time you're, you're one of the twins pretending to be the other twin. Mm -hmm. did, did that like sometimes kind of... That's why I wanted to do the film. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly why I wanted to do the film. Yeah, yeah. It was all that shit. That, that was so fun. Yeah. That is true about horror. And, and I'm not, most actors will tell you that. They are a blast. Because there's just so, you know, there's just fewer limitations. I mean... Hey, why don't we try where I lick the blood here? And 
Then the line comes out, this isn't cranberry sauce. I mean, yeah. where else do you get to do that? Yeah. You know, because that was yeah. an improv. Oh, really? Was. As I remember, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Awesome. Wow, that's a that's a pretty memorable improv. Uh, congratulations. That's still like the one of the taglines to the movie yeah. that people still say to this day. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure when they walk up to you on the street, that's what they're saying. <laughs> and, and I can tell you, it seemed over the top at the time. A lot of people went that's over the top and I went, I don't think so. You wait. <laughs> you wait till I see that in the cutting room. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm, I, I kind of like that line. Didn't uh, this film almost get you landed in um, what was the movie, uh, The Nutty Professor, because of your ability to act within the twin roles? No. No, I'm just kidding. It was Eddie Murphy all the way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just messing with you. Um, but no, it was. I'm going, where's he going with this? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'll go, go. I'll play. Where's he going? <laughs> Dave has bad jokes. So, uh, bear yeah, with sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so an interesting thing with Blood Rage is it had a number of working titles. So we had uh, Nightmare at, what was it? Shadow, Shadow Woods. Woods. I um, thought that was one time was Nightmare at Shadow Ridge, but I don't know. Then it was Blood Rage at Shadow Woods. Go ahead. And, and there was also Slash. It was just like Slasher because that actually um, comes up as the film title in one of the versions that we see today. It just just Slasher. You guys tell me what happened to it. <laughs> because after it first, you know, it first got opened and happened, it, you know, something happened. Yeah. I had no idea. It just went completely out of my. So I know I did. I did hear that when it came it had out. Had some as... life at the time because my niece said something. She was quite young back then, and yeah. she brought it to me. So at the time, it had some life uh, that I wasn't really part of my world. Okay because she and her friends watched it and it was kind of a thing inside, you know, but there's no way around it. This thing disappeared. It gets bought and sold and bought and sold. Yeah. People did whatever they did with it for what? Again, I haven't, I didn't do the math. 25 years. Yeah. So 1987. You tell me, the... you guys, know, I mean, how did it, how did it, how did it, how did it take off again? Five years so, ago, four years ago. Yeah. That's, I guess that was uh, the, Blu-ray, like you said, I think is right. what gave it the new life. And I know originally it came out as a very censored version, which is when they had the nightmare at Shadow Woods. So I'm assuming that when they decided to come out with the uncensored version, that's when they gave it a different title to see if it would, uh, I don't know, to see if it could get a different crowd or yeah. so people would rewatch, I guess, with the gore yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But it, it sat from 1983 to 1987 with not released or maybe like small uh showings any idea like do, so you just filmed it and then there was like no word about it well the problem part of it the problem is memory but i mean i had a percent on the on the uh growth so i never thought i would see a, a penny but it, you know i got it and um i got paid on that so something happened with it within the first couple years Sure. Something happened. But um, again, I lost track. I don't, I don't remember the rhythm of it. If you tell me it was four years before something happened, I'll believe you. I, I thought it was shot earlier than 87. Yes. Uh, so it looks like it was shot in 83. And yeah, then... that, that feels more right to me. Yeah. But um, I saw 87. I noted it here. I saw 87 on the page when I popped it up before mm. I, got, I jumped on. I'm not sure what oh. happened. I'm not surprised you saw some cash because uh, that was a, a video store um, mainstay, uh, at, at least in Rhode Island. Uh, once it hit VHS, um, like late 80s, early 90s, it was in all the stores. And so, that's where my niece caught it. Uh, yeah. Proud. They picked it up. About, yeah. And yeah. Uh, at that time, the VHS horror movies were booming uh, more so than probably any other genre. And the tape traders were going nuts for um, horror movies back then. So uh, I, I distinctly remember the VHS and then it kind of died down for years and years and years. And then all of a sudden, probably, yeah, when the Blu-ray picked up, it just took off again, so. And that's the thing too. It's like, you know, we're really big fans of holiday horror. You know, Dave makes a 
a big list yearly about like all different holidays that have horror films. And so like when it comes to Thanksgiving, you know, this film is like at the top of everyone's list. And yeah. so it's like, it is not that many Thanksgiving horror films, but you know, I think like this is one of the best ones. And so I know that probably brings a lot of traction to that film, you know? That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you don't yeah. watch this on Thanksgiving? <laughs> <laughs> You should be watching this every year on Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah, get it? That doesn't have to do with that. It's just a quirk. I don't. You know, I just shot something that you know. Uh, and, and they said they, they said you want to watch that because you know because the new technology. You want to watch it? And I said, uh, do I need to? <laughs> no, no. What I said was, am I wrapped? That's what I said. Yeah. Uh, and uh, somebody said, yeah, you're wrapped. And I said, yeah, yeah, I do actually. I just don't. It makes me, it's not that it dies, but it makes me a little self-conscious and I'd rather not do it, but I don't watch anything that I do very much. Oh, interesting. Nothing I've ever done, I, 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 I don't watch very often. So that, that doesn't have to do with anything about the horror genre. It does, sure World not. According to Garp is my, probably my favorite piece of work. It's a small role, but it's my favorite piece of work, I think maybe on film, but I've only seen it two times, three times. Yeah, that's the I, same I, thing. I don't, we sorry? had inter- I said it was the same thing. We inter- interviewed Brad Greenquist from Pet Cemetery. Uh huh. He's the same way. He he doesn't watch any of his films like that. And so like we. Talk I watch about- other films seven eight times. You know, yeah. classics I watch twenty times. But yeah. Is is there a personal reason or just just because? You know, I haven't really thought about it or analyzed it. But if you ask me what the reason was. I would say again, it's it's um, gives me the EBGBs. I don't want to be thinking about what I look. Uh, I don't want to be thinking. I just don't want to. I don't want it to get in my head. But if you have to do it, you have to do it. I'm, I'm just you know you got to look. You got to look. You got to look at stuff. So if you have to, you have to. You know. Yeah. But yeah. but I, I understand. I don't, my way. I don't know podcast. what it is. Huh? I don't listen to my own podcast because every time I listen, I'm like, geez, I sound so stupid. There you go. And I'm okay. Picking apart everything that I and said. You don't sound stupid at all. <laughs> well, I go to you. You, well, you, you uh, should be my new wife because my wife tells me I sound stupid every day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I, I saw it like I went through your credits, and one of the things that really grabbed me. Um, so I, I lived with my my mother, my grandmother, and my godmother when I was a child, and they loved um, the some of these shows. I, I cringe at, and one of them was Knots Landing, mm-hmm. and I saw that you were on Knots Landing. I'm like, oh my god, I have to ask them how was it being on Knots Landing? That was a mainstay in my house as a child, um, and I I you know, I was a kid and I was like, man, I can't stand that. <laughs> they would make me sit there at the table while they had the one TV with knots landing on. Well, I'll tell uh, you what, what, what it was it. like if you tell me why you couldn't stand it. That's another <laughs> genre. No, it is. Yeah. Soap operas are a genre, man. And I didn't ever watch soap operas. Yeah. Really? Uh, no, but when I was in New York starting out as an actor, there's only so many things you can do that pay the rent. You know, it's expensive yeah. town. Nah. and soap opera is one of them man you got to find you know it's that or commercials and i was hopeless at commercials <laughs> so um i had to study soap operas and i did it just like in fact that was my model for them when i did the horror film i oh, just wow. started watching them and watching them and watching them and i went there's something different what is it blah 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 i remember one of the things is eye contact yeah just really make eye contact and underline what it is you're doing. <laughs> kind of a style. That's not landing. <laughs> right. That well, pretty every, much every that, that's, you know, I am so angry now. You know, it's kind of a, so um, anyway, yeah, I love doing not standing. It was a real kick and it's popular. And I do a lot of stuff that's art. I love yeah. both. I really do. Yeah. I'm being honest with you. I really do. I love them both. Um, but boy, art can be a real grind, man. It's it's not like this is kind of popular and this is kind of sure. not. It is like this is really popular. People jump you on the street. People are yelling, "Hey, yeah, yeah!" You get a big check. Yeah. And this, you you got to go out and pay people to five people to show up. It's such a huge difference. Is all I'm saying. 
So yeah. Knots Landing was a real kick for me. I have to admit, I, I really enjoyed doing soaps. I, I didn't do that many of them. I never got trapped in them. I never did, you know, I really enjoyed it. And, I, and, and that, look, I came out of the tail end of that. Can you imagine what that scene was like? Hmm. Some of them came from Dallas. Um, geez, yeah. They went from Dallas and spun off Knots. And I was the last two, I was a, a, a you know, a regular character, but in the last two the last two seasons, it was just such a world to enter into. I mean, those people, and they've been doing it for years and years and years, and it was a cultural event. I mean, uh, it was a cultural that, event in my house. Yeah, in your time. house, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And it, you weren't allowed to leave. Like it, you you sat there, and it was like no, no one's allowed to get up from the table until this is over. And uh, even if I had friends over, they were like no you're staying at the table until this is over and you had to sit there and be quiet. And oh, that was you didn't no like game, it. No game, just you were watching this. It was uh, a punishment. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, I hear the Dallas theme song and I start having flashbacks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So um, another question I had. Uh, so it, 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 it's really obvious when you watch your stuff that you have a lot of talent. Um, and then I, I, so I had seen, um, graveyard shift to a long time ago and i watched it again uh when dave reached out to you i'm gonna do this right away and jump in don't lose your thought jerry chicoriti was one of the great experiences i've ever had working with that director jerry really? Chikariti, i just have to throw that in right away but go ahead continue your thought no that was it i i really wanted to get your thoughts on the film as a whole uh especially because you know you don't do a lot of horror um, and then going from Blood Rage to another. Well, horror. I had done Blood Rage. I had done yeah. Blood Rage at that point. Yeah, and then going straight to another horror, I found that I found that really interesting. And the characters were so vastly different, and your acting was uh, pretty different in that film. Yeah, and, totally uh, different. I, I just really wanted to get how was it on the set of that film as opposed to Blood Rage. Whoa, that's, a, I don't have, uh, my mind went, when you said compared to the two, Blood Rage. It was in Jacksonville, Florida. It was, you know, that place is like a horror film set. It's so, it's kind of bizarre. It has more fast food restaurants than anywhere in the world. Um, and Graveyard Ship 2 was Toronto, Canada. Mark, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you, but we lost you for a quick second. Where did you say with Blood Rage? Blood Rage was in Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville, okay. So it had this whole, you know, they have all these, it's the fast food capital it was of the world back then. <laughs> it had more fast food restaurants than any different name anywhere in America. And we literally just drove down the, these streets and just one after the other. It was a very bizarre that kind of fit in with um, horror films mm. in a way. Uh, everything was kind of over the top. Mm. And it had all that blood and gore. It was a slasher movie, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, Graveyard Ship 2 was not that same. It was more of like build up, um, you know, and it was Canada and Canada's a little more artsy and it was Toronto and it had an entirely different feel to it. It was still horror, you know, but it had an entirely different feel. And I, I remember doing the character really, really straight. I would, I could have been in any, you know, it was more, much more like, um, what's the famous one, the big budget famous one with Cassavetes. They do perfectly straight, Rosemary's Baby. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just such a classic. Mm. Not that Graveyard Ship 2 is, but I just mean I approached the character in that. Yeah. As I recall, very straightforward. Um, I just had a question about that film. Did it have, was that the initial intention to be Graveyard Shift 2? Or was there another working title at one time and then they decided to go in that direction just because of the, the money, association? Again, it's such a long ago. It's a, but as I recall, the money was based on Graveyard Shift 2. Yeah, okay. It was based on, it was based on the sequel. Uh, well, no, you're... It's just like my my deal was based on blood rage yeah it, 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 the risk is out people know what it is they use one thing to move another thing mm -hmm. lubricate it 
I, I, I seem to remember that that was always the sequel. Okay. Because it doesn't look like, if I remember, like it needs to be a sequel. Right. The, right. Yeah. I think the money was based on the sequel, but the script wasn't. Yeah, because I mean, there's no ties to the original graveyard shit. Yeah. There you go. So here, here's a weird question on that film. There was a lot of um, like sex and nudity and it was very gothic. And I was like, how are these actors? Good word, gothic, go ahead. Yeah, I was what like, Louise how are these Lasser, actors? Man, like, what was she doing, huh? What's that? Louise Lasser, what was she doing? She was great. She made the movie. I, she set the world of that film. Yeah, and I, I was like, how was it being on a set? Like, I'm a married guy. I, I walk on a set or I walk anywhere and there's beautiful women. I'm looking at the floor. Right. But like in that film, like young guy, like me in my twenties, if I was in that film, I would have gone nuts with all those girls around, um, man. And I'm thinking like, how do you act? Like, how, how do you do sex scenes? Like, how do you act like with all these naked girls around and not be like, you know what I mean? Like it's, it, I, I always wondered that because I'm not an actor. I don't know. He's a professional, Josh. That's the answer. Yeah, yeah. But, I, well, but how do you, how do you prepare for something like that? You know, you got 20 people looking at you and it just seems really awkward from like, I don't know. That, that I remember, I now, I re I'm having a memory as you, you talk about this, two memories. One is a friend of mine from college who um, asked the obvious question I won't go to. I don't know your audience or what you're, Really? You can say whatever. Trust me, they're open. I already was like, Jeez, aren't you afraid you're going to get a hard on? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's immediately where his mind went. He's a buddy. You right. know? I mean, he's not yep. in the business. So um, I was thinking of that as you were talking. And um, I also remember an acting teacher in college. This came up. I don't know how it came up. A concern or whatever, or he's trying to make a point. And he said, um, Believe it or not, when, when, you're, when you're working all the time and, you know, it's just like any other scene. And I thought, yeah, right. It's just like any other scene, but it ain't. Yeah, 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 right. It's like any other scene, but it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so much depends on the other people. I have to say my life, I've, I've found actors to be so generous on in general and and you're so dependent on the other person so it's a little bit like um you know in a foxhole i guess but that, that happens like bang if, if you're at all if you're willing to go and and you pick up bang they're willing to and then you can be an unselfconscious because you're together but i've never had a, an experience where somebody was you know because self-conscious or freaking out or whatever or oh god you you know and that shit does happen um then you really got to be a pro right but so, i never had that and so it's a little easier yeah. i was just curious thanks man no there's no i mean there's not a specific answer yeah it's different i mean yeah yeah so i noticed on your youtube i mean paper. the life on set is so different they lock them off you know, skin is such a big deal. You start taking your clothes off. It's things change fast. Nah. Yeah, they, they do. You got to make a decision. I'm going to go with it or I'm not. And that's where right. Because actors have to make that decision all the time. Every scene. Am I going to go with it? Am I going to go? Am I just, I, you know, not self-conscious. I'm going to enter this world. And to that extent, it is just like doing any other. Sure. I'm sorry. I cut somebody off. Oh, that's all right. So I noticed on your uh, YouTube page that uh, you love performing and uh, writing music. Are you still doing that? I'm taking a break from it. And I don't know why. I, you know, yeah. it's happened to me before. I had this thing going that I just loved, you know, and I called mm -hmm. it Mark Silver and Friends. And we played at this coffee shop in, um, here in Hollywood for about four years monthly. And um, it ended about three years ago. And I, I stopped playing, not right away, not like, oh, my heart's broken, I stopped playing. <laughs> but somehow with that out of my life and meeting other players and 
somehow it just faded out. And that's happened to me before. And then I, I go like, whoa, you better pick it up. You're going to forget how to play. You're going to forget your songs. You fit me. So I'm not playing a whole lot right now. I'm doing much more writing right now. Okay. I just finished a one person show that I wrote and I'm going to put up in February. Yeah. Uh, could you, could you tell us a little bit about that? That's a pretty interesting um, idea there. A one person show. Well, I've done them before. I don't know how much you uh, looked or, but I've done uh, one person shows before and I've written others. I've done them at Edinburgh. I've done them here in, in LA and in New York and London, uh, but mostly in Edinburgh and LA. And um, I've written for another person that went very, very well. And uh, um, so I started working at Zach Barnett studio out here with uh, Martha Gaiman and out of the work that we were doing there, I started writing poetry, which I haven't done since high school, literally. I write plays, I wrote a novel, I write, write all the time. Don't, I, I don't, no poetic voice, but I started finding a poetic voice out of the work in, in this uh, we were doing there. And um, like everybody, I'm engaged in these times. We live in such incredible times. I mean, where, <laughs> wherever you shake out on it, I'm not going there, but sure. these are incredible times and they could get a lot more incredible, easy. And, uh, um, somebody made this off comment about James Bond and, and I heard on TV and I, all these lights went off. That was about six months ago. So I started writing this poem that turned into this hour, 20 minute, one man show called The Last James Bond and The Final Mission One Six. I don't want to give any spoiler alert here, but then the reality of the film was like, reality, you know, art imitating art. I mean, because because I didn't know that at the time. I didn't know anybody, either. I had no inside knowledge. But in any event, so I'm gonna put it up here. Uh, I just had a first meeting. We're gonna do it at a tiny, tiny theater here that's just gotten new life called The Griff. And um, I couldn't be more excited. I just love yeah. doing this stuff. I do, yeah. I don't know what's gonna come of it. You know, I'm just diving in, but um, I do love doing that kind of artsy stuff. This is, how do you feel about doing this? Like you were saying, the theater is just getting new life and yeah. people, people are coming out again. Yep, yep. just starting. It, yep. Is that ex, is that really exciting for you to, to do this at this time? Or is it also kind of like a little scary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a little scary, a little exciting. You know, I haven't been going to a lot of events. I just started again a couple months ago. Yeah. So... Yeah, I, I, I want to be part of all that. You know, to whatever extent that matters, you know how you, 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 we carry the world in our heads. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So to be in that sense, part of the big picture. Yeah, yeah. I am. I'm aware of that. Yeah. I mean, and that's such a cool way for, you know, obviously you're contributing yourself and in your art to brightening up and making other people enthusiastic about getting out there in the world again right now. So I think that's such a cool like way to give back to the people and also, you know, reciprocal, you get this um, amazing turnout and, you know, the feedback that you'll get from your show. So. Well, let's hope. I, let's see. Let's see what, you know, so far I have to say the theater crowd that I've encountered at some readings and stuff I've gone to, they're coming out. People want to get out. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, I agree. I give you a lot of credit for a one man show. Uh, I've seen a few uh, one man shows and uh, they're tough. They they can be tough. Uh, and luckily, the ones I've seen have knocked it out of the park. I've only seen a couple uh, in Rhode Island and it was a, a, a while ago, a while ago. But um, man, I give you a lot of credit. Uh, those those could be really interesting, uh, but they could be tough to. Uh, especially one guy I saw, he was up there for like two hours and he just kept the audience that whole time. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Like this guy's amazing. And I never got the, I, I don't even remember the name of the show. I was with, uh, I think my wife uh, years and years ago, but I give you a lot of credit for that. That's pretty awesome. So yeah, to hold somebody to hold an audience for two hours. Yeah. That's, that's the chore. That's a, yeah. And it, it was, it was really good. Like there was, uh, he, he did, he was, he was joking and he did song and he, I mean. Well, that's the oh, one time I have seen it work was an actress who's a singer dancer. Oh yeah. 
and yeah, that's she did a show. Yeah. And she had a great story to tell, a great personal story, you know, about how things happened in her life. So she had events, boom, boom, personal events, but they also coincided with successful musicals. So she had that working for, she held the audience for two hours with an intermission, but usually it's really tough to break that hour 20. Yeah. With a one person yeah. show. It's tough to go past an hour, but to, to yeah. break an hour 20. So however that person did it, God bless them. Um, so Mark, you also have an art film coming out called How to Kill, Kill a White Man. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I don't have a big part in this, but I'm really excited about it. I love the script and I love the, um, um, just the, the, the artsy artfulness of it and making of it. And um, that's the most recent thing I did. So that's what I, I mentioned. And um, I had a blast doing it, and um, it'll be coming out in the um, in in the uh, spring. They'll doing the art festivals and seeing if you know if it catches catches a wind like this thing after twenty years. <laughs> yeah, hopefully sooner than that. But. Yeah, I was just gonna say. Hopefully, you don't have to wait the full twenty years. But <laughs> um, uh, so that's cool. Can you do? You, do you have like a just a brief? Because I know it's it was based on a book you had said, right? Um, by Augustus Breton, is that? Yeah, that's right. And it's um, hard to put into words. He does sure. it in, in entries and different styles of, 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 of writing and material, uh, like little short essays and, and poetic with high density, you know, uh, language. And mm -hmm. um, he has such a, I'm at a point in my life where to have a younger person with an entirely different take on things that is really interesting. Like his take on technology and, um, and, and events that are happening right now, because he, he's very mindful and sensitive of them in a three-dimensional right. way. So you, sure. I, I just, it's so fresh. I recognize the sensibility, but the world he's creating is completely like a trip to the moon for me because I'm from a whole nother world at this point so I, I just i just love being around it i loved when he sent me the material and i just said please let me do this awesome but i mean it sounds interesting so i do hope it is we, interesting we'll it's have a chance to different. yes entirely different from this right it's different the blood rage <laughs> no way <laughs> hey man i'll tell you when i watch blood rage again on the blu-ray version yeah i really i really got a lot more out of it yeah whether the world's changed or I've changed or whatever, but the whole mom and, you know, that older, uh, the better brother who's crazy. I mean, all the pressure that young people are under today, you read all this shit about, you know, uh, suicides and slashing and drugs and all this stuff from people with all the pressure to fit into some kind of alienated, more and more alienated culture and stuff. And I go, I wonder if that's what's working underneath. You know, the good kid that's psychotic and the bad kid that actually gets, you know, jammed yeah. somehow to the times. Now, I'm not saying people think it, but that it's working. And the crazy mom, I mean, Jesus, how do you <laughs> I mean, that's well, the uh, the world we live in now, it, it it's it's still like it's still relevant. Like that movie's probably more relevant now than it was. That's what in I'm saying. Seven. That's what I'm saying. I think it yeah. may be. It was for me. Uh, I I wish you had been there for our live event. Like uh, people, your your I think your acting really touches people in that film. There were people who were laughing, and then something would happen, and, and I mean, we brought a pretty good crowd to that uh, event, and people were like, "Yeah!" Like it it, it really uh, it really resonates. That's so that, great. I, thank you for sharing that. That's just so great. That was the event where there was a table of people. They were, so we, we, it was at a brew pub. So it was like a restaurant slash uh, brewery. And we had a whole half of the place. There was a table of older individuals who I don't know if they were there for our event, but they <laughs> stayed the entire time and watched this film. And they were like, you know, people like it, this older people, people that we wouldn't have happened to be there. Yeah. 
That and they stayed them. and they and they laughed and they you know they enjoyed it and it was it, we we just kept looking over and like they they're really liking this this is cool, um it, you know so I, I think that it's one of those films that I think it will continue to get more popularity huh. as people be, get more and more exposed to it so get well, ready for more people on the streets apparently. yeah but that's what's been happening apparently and it's you know come on when you make these things everybody's talking about it you know this would be a cult film yeah. Uh, and um who knows i mean this is so it's just so kind of fun and sweet you know yeah because it was completely out of my mind for 20 30 25 years did you initially have any regrets of doing the project after you did it at all just because it didn't seem to take off or anything it's a good question um I don't, I don't remember having regrets. I may have, you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. I don't remember that they were on such a level that, um, and I have had regrets. So, and I do remember them from other projects. Sure, sure. But I, you know, you always have hopes and you put everything, you, we, everybody put everything they could into it. I mean, and um, it didn't really, it didn't really take off in any way, but um, no, I don't remember having having uh, regrets particularly. Yeah, it kind of was such a long shot that when it wasn't it didn't seem anything that didn't seem it wasn't Friday the Thirteenth or you know um, yeah um, you kind of went yep oh well yeah that was if they if they approach you today and they say Blood Rage Two are you in are you in? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Or, or let's put it this way. I'm absolutely want to be in. I'm absolutely yeah. open to being in. Are you kidding? It would be a blast. Mm -hmm. All right. Somebody make this happen, please. <laughs> I, I need to see this, actually. <laughs> I noticed. I love that. playing those two characters. Yeah. And it's so cool that you reminded me about the one guy imitating his brother. I mean, there's <laughs> nothing... It is so fun as an actor to do that shit. It is so fun. Yeah. Um, I just, that's it. I'll just tell you, it's so fun. Yeah. So uh, it was actually added back today on Shudder. So the horror streaming network. Oh, uh huh. Yeah, it was added back on. So it was, I had noticed it was in the newly added. So I was looking in the comments and everybody was just saying, you know, I love this movie. So like you said, man, like, I know you don't like to look at your films and watch it, but just know that it's appreciated by a lot of horror fans. So I just yeah. want you to know that. Cool. You know. Cool, cool. That's really, yeah. Well, and that's what you want. You want, and they want the yeah. work to work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I certainly did. I mean, I, well, I, you have it on uh, earlier in the conversation. I mean, I do remember yeah. the work I did on those roles. Yeah. You know, and of course it's, it, it's still if you're doing your job it has to be horror mm -hmm. whatever that is that style whatever that is you got to get into zeitgeist of the moment you know of the world that you're in but um i did all i did do all that work you know i i was just thinking about what you just said like in the in the world that you're in in that film you know it's kind of an interesting uh contrast and I, I don't want to, you know, continue to beat that film to death. But like, just one thing I was just thinking of, like the the, it's such like a suburban type of like neighborhood. Like you kind of like, you feel like the houses seem like they would be safe, but then their your character is like brings this terror into a neighborhood that, you know, like he he almost can like walk into anybody's living room through their sure. sliding door. You know? Yeah, absolutely. It's a safe safe neighborhood that suddenly here's this this maniac. And you're just like, like walking around the neighborhood. Well, the other thing, okay, 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 okay. Psychosis was still pretty new then. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. It was pretty there, new. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's been so worked and worked and worked and worked. But it was still new, relatively new in our imaginations and in how we thought about crime, culpability, popular culture, etc. And He's just psychotic, you know, yeah. that guy who just might be a little too much, but 
he doesn't feel any guilt. So <laughs> he's totally, he definitely borderline I personality right there. Feel any guilt. Yeah. So it's like, well, you got it. So whatever tickles him, it, it just, if he, if he thinks he can get away with it, that's all that matters. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. just plus and minus. It's just, it's not guilt or shame or upset or anything because he's psychotic. And yeah, he can go into anybody's <laughs> and I'm just picking little oddities, you know, yeah. like little breadcrumbs to tell how fucking this <laughs> he is. <laughs> So, I love it. You know, I love playing that's like making him psychotic. The other guy, you know, is a character I was more used to playing, you know, because yeah. it's psychology, psychological and he had a tough life and he's, you know, he's got his shoulders down. His brother was the one that was loved more than him. You know? <laughs> Isn't that what makes this the ultimate Thanksgiving horror? Because Thanksgiving is, you know, a time uh, of comfort and yeah. family. Uh! Yeah. And then, and then the, now, and that's why it's the horror element is like, obviously this is a little invasion of that safety and security of family. So that's why well, this man, is there isn't, the, there's a, there's a dollop of horror in families. There's just, I mean, come on, there's just no, <laughs> no way around it. Yeah. That's been explored, you know, a lot, but sure. to explore it in a slasher context. Yeah. With it being a slasher, you know, um, film, we're big fans of like the kill scenes and everything like that. Uh, I want to, I want to know which was your favorite, the kill scene in the film that you had to do. Um, I don't, I don't, if you shot one or two at me, I might be able to come up with it, but I have a favorite story, but it's not really. All right, let's, let's hear your story then. Well, the favorite story I have, and I don't know that I can recreate it, so I'll, 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 make, it, I'll, I'll make it brief. So if it doesn't work, then there's a scene where I cut off some guy's hand. Yeah. So yes. see that yeah. Again. He's with my mom. So obviously I'm going to. Yep. And we had to, because of the camera angle and everything, we had to put it on a, they had to put it on a, a platform. Mm -hmm. And, the, you know, it wasn't a big budget. So the way they were going to get this effect was to put them on a swivel <laughs> chair. So we have all this stuff he had going down his, his hand to get the blood shooting out with a pump swirling and this blood flying out on a swivel chair and the cameraman swinging around on his feet, as I remember. And all this is like, it really looked like Rube Goldberg. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, everybody's ready. We're going to do this take. And I stood there to watch it because this was a big deal for, for, for this, this film. And it all went wrong right from the start. And it, it shouldn't laugh, man. It just went wrong. And he started to go, oh, and he got off balance in the chair and the chair slid off the edge of the platform. And now the, and the blood is like it's going and he's trying to save himself as he falls on his head. <laughs> and the thing is shooting and all over. Every time he's moving, <laughs> blood is shooting all over the friggin' apartment, and they're gonna have to reset. And oh my it. god! Oh, man. It was the funniest damn thing. I don't think anybody stopped laughing for the next twenty-five minutes. <laughs> uh, they should add that into like the blue. Oh, if they, I don't know what he had on film. I don't know what he had on film because you know he might have just immediately covered up the camera lens. Yeah, because that. <laughs> <laughs> the guy, oh my god the guy yeah, probably falling didn't. off and spinning in the hand going like this and, and, and <laughs> intently pumping the blood out but um i don't remember the individual killing scenes well enough to, to the um, hand is I, definitely uh yeah, one of the best it was and it you know and eventually we got it yeah and um it, it is fun to to do that effect a lot for all yeah, that's the thing today, you know, they handle all that with like CGI. So just, it's good that you have that experience, you know, from just being in that film and just witnessing that because most of the stuff is done on the computer and digital stuff. So a lot of people aren't able to experience that. It's such a different world now. Yeah. It, it is. It's so different. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've worked with people who would never in an entire time got a single scene out unbroken. Wow. Yeah. They just break the lines. They do all this. Everything is just stop, pick up because it's all data. It's just it's yeah. no cost. In the old days, it was film. Yeah, it was money. 
it was it was organization but it's it's just so different the feel of it the rhythm on a set with a digital recording yeah yeah because everyone's just going back to like all the original stuff like even like the vhs tapes you know people collect it, are collecting vhs tapes and they're selling for big money on the aftermarket to sell them you know so uh -huh. yeah so I, didn't I, know. Know about, I didn't know about that i mean yeah. it makes sense yeah, but because the same thing's happening with vinyl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but, um, it makes sense, but I didn't know. Yeah, that. yeah. And I and I know in recording there are, there are people, Delaney from Delaney Bonnie, he uh, swore by analog. Man, he wouldn't, he wouldn't budge. Yeah. But I know a couple of people who, they're going back. Younger people, I get a kick out of that. Younger people, doing <laughs> stuff. Well, no, it's one of the few things that you get better as you get older. Is you get to enjoy different perspectives, you know. Sure. They're really different. You guys are still just a little too young, I think. But um, going back to analog recording, whoa, that's a mm. that's a commitment. Mm -hmm. Because they they're into the they're into the process as much as it, and it changes the process, and the process yeah. changes the world, and it changes the rhythm, and it changes the relationship, and blah blah. And I go, well, I'm hip, man. I, I think that's interesting because I think one of the things that we cling to with the movies that we love from, you know, that time is you can tell that the people that made them, even if it didn't come out like a blockbuster film or the best film, you could tell there was love and that there they, was like, effort. Yeah. The and crew, man. Who are these crew guys? These gypsies? Yeah. <laughs> because I'm telling you, they bust a gut. Yeah. Yeah. They worked around the clock. Those movies had soul and like the movies you see nowadays, it feels like there's, there's, it's kind of empty behind, like even like they'll make a remake of something like Pet Cemetery. Okay. Film on the surface, but it's just missing something. You know what I mean? And it's well, like, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I can't speak to that particular film, just, but just in general, like, there's you know what I mean? There's a whole lot of good movies, work yeah. being done. There is, but then there's a whole lot of stuff that's sort of like in music. It's sort of like that, that, that what's that technique where they, 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 they harmonize to put it in the, they just, they adjust as you sing and it gives it this slight echoey kind of quality and it just takes auto tuner. <laughs> yeah, the auto yeah the auto tuning which is cool i mean i'm not it's just another thing it depends yeah. how you use it so i don't mean to, to, to bang on it but i mean there's a whole world that's and i'm not bagging on pet cemetery 2 or the remake rather um i don't even know it it's a really fun interesting work out there on series tv low budget short films on YouTube, yeah. but there's a lot of crap. I don't get, I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah, it's, it's just, just, it just feels like there's a little bit of a disconnect. I can tell you they want it. They, 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 a lot of that stuff they wanted, it used to be, you know, the producer has a look in mind. This is the look I want. This mm -hmm. is the world I want to create. Um, and some of it you could go with and some of it you decide not to go with or it's more or less interesting it works it doesn't work but there's a lot of stuff that i agree is even though there's yeah. a lot of really good stuff there's yeah. yeah you you said you were a writer um yeah. this is a really interesting book called analog nightmares uh-huh and it's literally every horror movie that was shot on um vhs cool. like shot on vhs by the and it, it it's literally like my childhood in a book uh, going to the video store, Blood Rage was was there, and man, going through the VHS tapes and finding uh, low budget independent guys that just put a lot of heart and soul, and even the actors, like a lot of those actors, don't get credit because they were so into it. And you have to acting back then, you you really had to go with it, like you said. And uh, man, some of it's just so beautiful, and it's it's really almost forgotten um, at this point. It's not you know? my world, but I totally respect the, the, the people in that world that I overlap yeah. with it all. Yeah. It's, it's almost like- uh, Passion is so attractive. Passion yeah, yeah. commitment is so attractive. Yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. You, I'm telling you, you should live in Providence. Providence is like the most artsy city. And- uh, Rhode Island? Tiny, but yeah. uh, it's, it's a beautiful city and it, um, there's a lot of, different art here there's poetry i've heard that but you know i don't know it at all i'm an east coast originally person new york city 
Okay. Oh, really? From a small town in Pennsylvania to New York City right after college, and I just loved it there. But eventually I settled in California, but I never made it to Provincetown. So I don't Check know. It out. Yeah. Yeah. If you ever if you ever come this way, we'll we'll give you the tour. <laughs> cool. Cool. I'll take you up on it. Now, now, now the theaters been... are opening back up. It's getting good again. Yeah. Good. Now, have you been good part theater. of uh, conventions? Have you been doing any of the horror conventions? No. Mm -mm. Oh, you should look into that because I think that you would, like people would definitely would like to meet you and and you'll enjoy that experience because you know me, Dave, and Josh, we all go around to different horror conventions. They have some all over, like New York and uh, Philly and Mass. We always go, and it just gives that the um the actors a chance to kind of connect with the fans, you know. And mm -hmm. at the same time, some of the actors kind of sit back and they can revisit and see some of the people they worked with on films and have a good time you know most of the time they have the party and stuff so i think you should look into it man have yeah. your agent reach out it would, and it would give you some perspective thought yeah it would definitely give you some perspective on how yeah how much appre how appreciated this film is i i could only imagine the turnout you would get of uh people interested to speak to you about it i i really could and you can make some good money <laughs> yeah that's yeah. it <laughs> nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with that uh, yeah um, you know what? We're gonna look, we're gonna reach out. We're gonna get you some convention spots. <laughs> That's it. I'm in a province now. Um. So, Mark, um, I think that's gonna wrap up our questions for this. I, I've had such a good time. Thank you, guys. Man, it's been such a pleasure talking with you. Oh, absolutely. This, like I said, this is was like kind of surreal to have you on here. Um. I didn't think we would actually be able to do this, but just seeing you, seeing that smile and thinking about Blood Rage, I'm like, oh, wow, this is this is awesome. So thank you so much. Cool. Um, all right. So uh, I just wanted to, you know, for all the listeners, if you haven't checked out Blood Rage, which I think most of our listeners most likely have already, make sure you check it out. Like Brandon said, it's currently streaming on Shudder. Uh, but uh, so signing off, this is Dave. Brandon. This is Joshua. Mark Soper. <laughs>